God has given us so beautiful talent in this church and they bring heaven down with their singing and this is for us to practice because when we go to heaven that's all we are going to do we are going to worship the lord all that we can do is sing holy 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 lord god almighty that's all we are going to do in heaven and this is our preparation for that day where we shall meet god and we shall sing so this is a glimpse of heaven on earth has we worship the lord in spirit and in truth so i am very thankful to god for talented brothers and sisters that god has brought into this church today i would like to exhort from the word of god pastor sam kuti matthew has asked brother uh so for the sam to give us the final message of the uh, of, of of the sunday today and so he will be speaking from us the final word of god but i would like to exhort you from the word of god from the book of psalms psalms 119 Psalms 119 uh verses uh, let's go to Psalms 119 um verse 97 onwards 97 to 105 I'll just read it out just follow me in your holy in your scriptures the word says oh how i love your law i meditate on it all day long your commands make me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me i have more insight than all my teachers for i meditate on your statutes i have more understanding than the elders for i obey your precepts i have kept my feet from every evil path so that i might obey your word i have not departed from your law for you for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth I gain wisdom from your precepts therefore I hate every wrong path your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path heavenly father your word your people i am yours o lord speak to us through thy word in jesus name amen amen every scripture is god breathed even though written by different people at different times we call it god's word why because we believe that god inspired people to write down the scriptures and they wrote it down even though written by 40 different people it all comes together as one book because it is inspired word of god and has a first timothy 3:16 says God's word is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training. Why? Because the man of God, the women of God shall be thoroughly fully furnished, equipped to do God's will. It is God's will is a standard. Not a philosopher, not anybody out of this world can tell us how we should live a morally good life. It is God's word we have to base our life on God's word. because one day we have to be in god's kingdom and to be eligible to be in god's kingdom your life in this earth has to change it has to be in accordance to god's word so we hear the last words i'm going to touch on one words your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path we have heard this words many times and it is right in the middle of psalms 119 many people do not read psalms 119 all the way because oh, it might take all day but it was written by a man named david believe it is written by david and david always pours out his heart before god and he says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path your word who is this word the bible says in john chapter 1 was one in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god your word this word is no one than the second person of the trinity our lord and savior jesus christ your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path first john chapter 1 was 4 says in him was the li- in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind the light shines in darkness and the darkness has not overcome it light and darkness are two extremes 
darkness is just put it simply darkness is the absence of light when god created the heavens and the earth in genesis 1 we read darkness covered the earth so god created the light when the light came darkness has no place darkness has to flee why when light came darkness have to run away because darkness is contrary to the light where light is there cannot be darkness so darkness is the absence of light you know darkness in the bible also represents many things it it talks about lack of knowledge a person is dark in his mind he a lack of knowledge lack of wisdom and understanding we heard about depravity of man in romans it is because of the darkened heart and darkened mind god gave them up to a depraved mind they do things that are not right they do things that are shameful but they take pride in their shame why because their minds are darkened darkness also exemplifies the wickedness of people wickedness that is done in darkness right darkness is loved by who the thieves love darkness because in the cover of darkness they can go steal right thieves and also you see see i'm a very enthusiastic i, I like wild life I like wildlife and especially I like to watch the lions. The lions go hunting in dark. They have more chances of becoming successful because in the cover of darkness they have good night vision and the cover of darkness they can hunt. And the prey is sitting over there doesn't even see the animal coming the lions coming and the lions attack the animal very easy to catch prey at night but during the daytime it is very hard. So in the cover of darkness many animals come so one day when I was in bombay we entered a house i entered i entered a room basically in the middle of the night he opened the door and turned on the lights and we could hear a big rumbling sound it was all cockroaches cockroaches infested that room during the night time it's all cockroaches light came on they are running for cover and we could hear audibly this this rumbling sound of all these creatures running for cover i don't know whether you have experienced that i've seen that it has happened many times in my life why during the daytime when the light is there everything is clean and nice you will never see a little insect or a cockroach over there but in the middle of the night they all come out the creatures of darkness they are creatures of darkness they come out at night time you know the bible also says the dark world is ruled by the devil the kingdom of darkness it says hell is also described as a dark place these are verses in the bible you know exodus chapter 10 verse 21 we read out of the 10 plagues that came upon egypt one of the plague was what darkness if it was enough to show the king pharaoh king pharaoh the king of egypt and the people that god's hand controls the whole universe Three days of darkness came upon them and it says over here in Exodus chapter 10 verse 21 darkness was the Lord said to Moses stretch out your hand towards the sky so the darkness spreads over Egypt darkness that can be felt can you feel darkness but they could feel darkness there was no light for three days and that's a curse see darkness stands for the devil for punishment for evil whereas light Jesus Christ he is light he came into this dark world for a purpose to enlighten people's life to tell them what is right what is wrong light came into this dark world bible says Jesus Christ came into this world dark world as a beacon of light he came so that he could enlighten darkened souls darkened mind dear brothers and sisters you and i are sitting over here because god in his providence in his great love and mercy towards us through the message of the gospel light shone upon each one of us that's why we are sitting over here as children of the light praise god for that brothers and sisters praise god because out of the multitude of people who are still in darkness god chose you and me before the foundation of the earth was laid he chose you and me to be enlightened by his light you and i are the recipient of god's mercies our hearts are enlightened your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path david says your word not the sun 
not the philosophers of the world not the intelligent people of this world but it is your pure word god himself gave us his son and this son who created the ends of the earth by the power of his word came and dwelt with man to show man how you should live in this world even though he did not commit any sin he became sin for us so that you and i may become the righteousness of god through jesus christ hallelujah john chapter 3 verse 21 says but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light you and i have to live by the truth and what is truth Jesus Christ is truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You and I are called Christians because we are the followers of Christ. First in Antioch, people saw a peculiar people. They did not call themselves Christian. It was the Gentiles, it was the people who were outside Christ, show, saw a group of people who are living holy lives, righteous lives. Living a peculiar life, not mingling with this world, living a separated life. And by their life and by their worship and by their deeds, people outside called these people Christians. In Antioch, people who followed the way, who is this way? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever followed this way, they were called Christians. So you and I are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We follow the way, the Lord Jesus Christ who became, who came into this world, the world who created everything took upon himself flesh and was born in this world so that he can show us how we should live a life in this world. Dear brothers and sisters, your word, if God's word doesn't reside in us, how do we know how we should live in this world? In Psalms 119, at the very beginning of it, a question is asked to a young man. How can a young man live in purity? How can a young man live in holiness i think it is the first five the first five verses of 119 you will see that word how can a young man live in purity let's turn to it since we are in 119 psalms uh it says where is it oh it was nine how can a young man keep his way pure and the answer is by living according to your word how can a young man how can a young woman how can an older person live in purity our standard is God's word. See, we live in a culture. We live in a culture which is very immoral. We live in a culture which does not recognize God. You know, when our children's long time ago, 50 years, maybe I don't know how long ago, but children's when the school starts, they used to start with a prayer. There used to be 10 commandments in every classroom. There used to be Ten Commandments in the Supreme Court of the United States. They removed the Ten Commandments from the Supreme Court. They stopped praying in the churches. They did not take the name of God anymore. We have come to a point where we are rejecting God altogether. Our children are growing up in a society where God is not at all recognized. Everything we do or this country does is immoral. If God says thou shalt not do certain things, we make sure our country, the, oh, the elected leaders of this country make sure that we do everything that God said you shall not do. And we do this. Just look at the newspaper. Let's see, you know what's happening around in the world. Bible says, if God says you shall do something, people will not do those things. This is where the country is going. And God has created you and me to be a church in this place so that we may shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ not only through our word but through our life and so God's us the church becomes a lighthouse for the world the dark world should see the light coming out from the church and the job of the church or the job of every believer is to shine God's light so that darkened souls would see their issues, their problem, and their life also will be enlightened. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, go to the ends of the world, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and making them and teaching them everything that I have commanded you. Church is a place where we go and evangelize people out there. 
and we bring them into the church and the second mandate that God has given the church is that you must disciple teach them everything that i have commanded you teach them not philosophy teach them not other things but teach them what the book says the book talks to the fathers the book talks to the mothers talks to the wife talks to the husband it also talks to the children every people every person in this church will have something to learn from the bible your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path not for a single day not just on sundays but every moment of our life god's word should be a light for us see while we are walking we need the lamp every step of the word way we every step that we put we have to walk according to god's will but the light shows us a path this path is the narrow path that lord leads to the lord's celestial city of god you drift away from this path you are in the broad broad path of destruction your word god's word day moment by moment i have to live by god's word walk in it and walk according to the path that he has marked out for us so that at the end of that road we shall enter god's kingdom at the end of that road we will see the lord jesus christ standing over there to receive you back into his kingdom hallelujah your word it's only by god's word that we can enter into god's kingdom i cannot come up with my own philosophy i cannot come up with any other intelligent thoughts but it has to be god's word if it is not god's way it is some other way who oh, you know what that's a broad path of destruction dear brothers and sisters how should we know god's way it is by spending time in in meditating on god's word see it's not just sunday that we come and hear the word of god our life should be such that every day we spend a quality time in the presence of god your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path but i'll tell you god wants us to all obey his word but there is a devil who's always out to tempt us have to drift us to try to try to deceive us and 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 wants us to be away from that path that leads to god's heaven and so we have to be very vigilant brothers and sisters especially in this day and age we have to be very vigilant the question must be asked what does the scripture say what does the bible say whatever i am doing is it according to the world standard or is it god's standard you see we have to ask this question and we have to open god's word and meditate on it daily means of grace how can we walk in the light or before that i have to just ask you this question yes god has enlightened our hearts our minds and we have to be that light out there jesus christ came into this world as a light and now he's gone back to heaven but is the light still there yes the light is you and me he has given you and me the light and it's our job to go and proclaim god's word outside it also depends if god has given us his light how how bright is our light you know i have a I've, <laughs> one day a cop knocked at our door in kerala in the middle of the night and the cop wanted a flashlight and we had a flashlight but the battery was so low that even if you turn a back even if you turn that flashlight the light doesn't come because it's so dim you can't even see anything you see is our life like that we say we have the light but how bright is our light do we shine to make a difference or is it like that flashlight which had no it turned on but had no difference you see our life has to shine as a light that god has given us bright not hide it under the bushel under the bed but stand on the top we have to be that lighthouse that shows people what is the standard hallelujah brothers sisters means of grace how do we become stronger how do we shine our light brighter first of all we have to refuel ourselves we have to be charged if we do not charge ourselves how are we going to re- how are we going to enlighten other people there are bright lights right your flashlight can be turned on and the entire place the flood lights can be turned on everybody could see everything that's the kind of light we have to be but how can we charge ourselves there are something called the means of grace means of grace what are these means of grace there are several means of grace but let me highlight to you five means of grace 
the first means of grace that God gives you is prayer. A vibrant prayer life. If you do not have a vibrant prayer life, then you do not have relationship with Christ. You got to have a very good prayer life. Not a two minute, three minute prayer. But you can pray throughout the day. But especially in the morning time, spend time with God in prayer. Charge yourself. Refuel yourself because you want to go out into this dark world and you want to shine as a light. So charge yourself with prayer. Second, the word of God. Meditating on, your, on God's word. Right? That's a great delight in meditating on God's word. By meditating on God's word, you and the scriptures and the Holy Spirit becomes your teacher. But you must give time to sit in the presence of God and meditate on God's word. Meditation of the God's word is another means of grace. Third means of grace is fellowship of the saints. The Bible says, or David says, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, he was very glad to know that people are, let's go into the house of the Lord. Fellowship of the saints is very important as a one, another means of grace. Okay, Breaking of the bread of the Holy Communion is another means of grace that you get. When you come together, we remember Christ and His crucifixion and what He has done. And we break bread. We have Holy Communion. That is another means of grace, brothers and sisters. I think I said already four, right? And the fifth one. Um, fifth one, uh, I don't remember. Somewhere over here. Okay. There are many means of grace. You can go and do other things. So fasting and prayer we are going to have next Sunday. That's another means of grace. Okay. Fellowship is serving the body of believers. We come over here, we know each other's problem, we help each other, serving the kingdom of God, serving each other. And there are many other means of grace that we can go, but at least hold on to this five means of grace, primary means of grace. If you don't have prayer, then you're dead. If you don't meditate on God's words, you become an easy prey for the devil because you do not know which is right, which is wrong because God's word is a moral compass that we must have, not what the philosophers or the things or the culture tells us we need to have God's word. It's God's word. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, you and I are called out to be the light. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Every day, meditate on God's word. This is God's revealed will for us. It speaks to every kind of people. If we ignore it, you can't tell that I did not know when you go to heaven right? We must know what is right, what is wrong. And I'm telling you, the devil is very active, not outside, but inside the church. He's active inside the church. Christ is that embodiment of love. Christ is love. One of the characteristics of the nature of God, or the attributes of God, is God is love. And because God is love, he gave his only because. And the Bible says, whoever, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son so that you and I may believe in him and should not perish but have everlasting life. And this Christ is the embodiment of love. When Christ enters us, we become Christ-like. We are not Christ. We become Christ-like. His love is within us and that's why there should be great love between brothers and sisters. Outside the world is politics. Outside the world is competition. Outside is gossip. Outside is many bad things. But in the church, it is love that has to hold us together. Christ's love because he saved us. We were destined to go to hell. But God saved me and made us part of his kingdom. And when I see you all, it is my brothers and sisters in the, law, in the Lord. Why? Because Christ is love. You know what Bible says? If I can speak in the tongues of men or angels, but if I do not have love, if I do not have love, I'm just a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. That's what the Bible says. If I have gift of prophecy and I can, I can uh, fathom all mysteries and if I have faith that can move mountains, but if I do not have love, the Bible says, I am nothing. The Bible says, if I give my everything that I possess to the poor and if I give my body to hardship so that I can boast about it but if I do not have love the Bible says I gain nothing why? 
because love is patience love is kind love does not envy it does not boast it is not proud love is not rude it does not keep a record of wrong you see brothers and sisters we can't keep record of wrong because that is not love love does not keep a record of wrong love does not delight in evil but rejoices in truth why because love never fails love never fails because christ never fails us praise be to god brothers and sisters we are to walk according to word of god may the word of god richly dwell in us when uh, when jesus christ was tempted he did not go looking at the word where is the word he wrote the word but the word was in his heart and he and he rebuked devil with the word you and i must be richly we must, must must have the word of god richly within us i have hidden your words in my heart so that i may not sin against you brothers and sisters god's word the infallible word of god it is sufficient the bible says it is authoritative word of god and it is sufficient for us may god bless you brothers and sisters that this word may dwell richly in us can we say like the psalmist says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path heavenly father we thank you for your word o lord your word encourages us your your word stands forever because you are eternal Your word is eternal because you are eternal O Lord. Help us to trust in your word all the days of our life. Thank you Lord for this word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.